This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from the Bay Area. Her name is Miss Washington. Miss Washington, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good, good. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, you have a new EP out, or your latest EP. It's called Fate. Um, which I love, by the way. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But before we do, tell us a little bit more about Miss um, Washington. Yeah, so I, I started in music really, really young. Um, I grew up in the church and was just naturally inclined to music through singing in choirs, through you know, watching the musicians playing, trying to learn it at home and and like literally sitting for hours on the piano, trying to figure out songs from the radio and songs from church and, and naturally just loved what music made me feel like. So, um, you know, just kept going with that and, and learned how to play on my own and eventually, you know, took lessons and, um, you know, still kept singing. I was in so many different groups and things like that. Um, and Luckily, my gift took me to to these musical institutions where I went to um, a performing arts middle school and high school um, in Oakland, California, actually. And, um, you know, I really got some good training and theory and learned how to read and everything like that. And um, from then on, I then got a full scholarship to Berklee College of Music in Boston. Um, and I and I kept learning music there and I kept doing doing it. And, and I was really like wanting to build a career, career from there because I felt like, okay, this is this is the right thing. I can't see anything else right for me than this, so. Okay. Uh, now, you said you grew up in the Bay Area um, and you said your early uh, exposure to music was through the church. Yes. Um, was your family uh, involved in uh, music as well or just you? Well, I wouldn't say my parents they don't play any instruments or like sing. Like my mother sings in the choir a little bit, but you know, not in a forward, you know, out front kind of way. So um, I would just say it didn't really come from family members per se, but um, I think the environments that they brought us into helped, uh, uh, I guess, nurture that inside of us. So that's, that's more so what it is. Okay. Um, and we were talking a little bit before we started recording, um, you just sort of immersed yourself and started picking up everything related to music at church or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, besides the gospel aspect of it, um, did you listen to other, because in the Bay Area, I'm from the Bay Area, like I, we were talking earlier. Right. right. And it's a um, just a, um, a diverse area when it comes to music. I mean, you have gospel and R&B and rock and jazz, uh, uh, hip hop. Um, so uh, I know you got your start in church, but were you influenced by other types of uh, genres as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, you know, it, as, as a person who just loves music and naturally was inclined towards music, I just loved music. So it didn't matter if it was songs, something I heard in the church or something I heard on the radio, um, whether that was like Alicia Keys or Stevie Wonder. Like I grew up on all of that music, old school and new school, you know, being, like you said, being in the Bay Area, it's such a melting pot of all these different, you know, uh, genres and styles and funk and R&B and, you know, like, and, and honestly, with in terms of gospel, you know, I really 
more earlier, it was inclined to some of the contemporary gospel. So the, really the, the, some of my favorite gospel songs growing up were more R and B sounding anyway. So it all kind of, kind of, uh, I kept seeing the, the relationship that it actually had, you know, outside of the church, you know, and seeing like the musical bonds and, and the family tree of music, how it, how it all just relates, which is why like studying the music really helped me see that. And, and I studied different, you know, genres growing, uh, going to school in high school and college jazz. I played in so many different jazz bands um, and that really helped me with different aspects of how I improvise. And, and, and then I got, I was in different R&B bands and then I sing in church and I play organ in church and, you know, or I, I do a wedding. So I'm doing a whole bunch of pop tunes. So, so it, it's, I feel like I'm really, you know, immersed in this wide variety of just musical perspective, just because of how I was raised and trained, you know, in my journey. Okay. Um, now, Growing up, was there always music being played in your house or? Yeah, I mean, I like literally two things, like two environments come to mind. Um, you know, whether it's like cleaning up on Saturday mornings, like playing music in the house on large speakers or from the uh, TV um, in the living room. Like you, if you, if you heard music on Saturday morning, like you knew it was time to clean, clean up the house, you know, um, or, you know, a family picnic, a family barbecue, like it's some old school earth, wind and fire or, or dad's band or, you know, stuff like that playing, um, in the background. Um, but yeah, like we have a whole bunch of CDs just in the house and, uh, that, that we had just a collection of different music, uh, you know, music genres that we just g listened to and grew grown up on. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then that journey took you to the prestigious uh, Berkeley College of Music in uh, yeah. Boston. Yeah. Um, you're like the second, I believe, artist who I've interviewed from that prestigious school. What was your experience like at, at Berkeley? Oh, my God. I mean, growing up in the Bay Area, like any, I, I feel like for any person that grows up in a small town and you're um, really thriving in what you do, you know, as soon as you leave that small town, you really see like the world and reality and, and seeing other people's musical perspectives for the first time. So for me, it was like, wow, like it was so what, just what I needed, you know, um, because I always felt like, okay, like, I love the Bay, but I want to see what else is out there. You know, I'm looking at YouTube videos and seeing other musicians from these other towns and like seeing how they play, seeing how they approach music and stuff like that. So it was amazing for me to just be in that environment, like all these musical people around me 24 seven, like all the time, like going to jam sessions and, you know, co collaborating with different musicians and like, you know, just, all this crazy stuff and, and seeing, seeing like, you know, what, what are our similarities and what are our, what are our differences? You're like, you know, I, I, I have friends from Tennessee, from New York, from, you know, all the, from outside the country. So it, it was just awesome to see the variety of musicians around me all the time. And I had, I've had the greatest, one of the greatest, greatest opportunities in my career from, from just being around there from the connects I made um, like I did a session with um, Robert Glasper. He came through and they had a select number of students, you know, work with him. And um, then I did a, a, I was a part of a clinic for Greg Fillingames, who's the keyboardist for um, Michael Jackson and uh, working closely with Quincy Jones and things like that. So, and then I was able to do a uh, Black Girls Rock for two years. So it, it was just amazing to be there. Like it was beyond my wildest dreams of what I could think logically here like you know just beyond what i imagined you know so it was awesome okay uh yeah everyone i had a couple of friends who went there and they just rave about being there and all the um the musicians who come back or yeah to hang out at school and sit in on a jam session or yeah so it must be uh pretty all inspiring um mm -hmm. so Let's talk about fate. Um, tell us about 
the whole journey. Uh, now, let me. This is this your your debut uh, EP or my debut EP first uh, album? You know, at all. This is my first EP. Okay, and we was should mention that it was just released October twenty third, I believe, right? Yes, the twenty third. Okay. All right, take us to uh, take us through. Um, you know, collaborating and writing and putting out this uh, fine piece of work you have. Yeah, man. So, you know, as soon as I was out of college, um, which was 2019, when I graduated, um, I, I really felt the need to put out some music and, you know, really show the world, like, what is my unique perspective, you know, from all those years of training, from all those years of, of playing other people's music, like, what do I have to say? And I really felt like that was what I wanted to do. So in the summer of 2019, I, um, I, and I already had some of these ideas already written from just, you know, on my computer, things written down, things created. And I followed up on some of those songs and was like, oh, wait, this is the album, you know? And um, I collaborated with Jan Hunter, who was the producer um, and we, we co, you know, we co-produced the, the entire album and, um, you know, I just gave him like, I, I write all my songs pretty much on keys and singing. So, you know, I sent him the melody, the harmony, the bass thing, and he, he did his thing and, and, and elevated it to this masterful production level. Um, and it just was amazing to see it all come together. Um, and, and having this this sound that even kind of helped me learn what my sound was because I didn't know fully what it was. And then this journey was kind of healing for me to see like, wh where, where is this, where's my sound gonna take me? And, and what is what does my expression sound like? Um, and it, it's very like reminiscent a little bit of 90s R&B um, mixed with some modern R&B sounds. Um, and yeah, it, it was, it was just, just that. It was just that, just an R&B vibe that I just wanted to put out there. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code, BGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Okay. Uh, yeah, when I listen to it, I hear a little, um, I guess the term is neo soul. I yeah. still don't know what the difference between neo soul and RB is, but definitely has <laughs> that flavor to it. Uh, so from start to finish how long did it take to to put it all together um it took a few months um from july let's say so july to october yeah so about, about four months um given that i had already you know written the songs all the way through before i had um written and composed it before i had gotten with yon hunter um, and there's also, sorry, I forgot to add the other two producers that uh, worked on uh, track two and track six, um, Antonio Loomis. And we got David McKenzie on the bass for track six and Miguel Diaz on track six as well on guitar. Um, but yeah, like it, it was for me, it was just like, this is the time, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't feel like it was rushed. Like I took my time and it just fell right into place for me. Okay. Um, were you trying to convey a message? Um, yes. In this uh, EP and what was that? Yeah. Um, I, as I was putting all the songs together and, and figuring out, okay, which track needs to go where um, I saw this, this trend uh, from start to finish of each song, like conveying actually a different phase of a relationship um, of a romantic relationship. And, you know, if, if you listen to it and you go through it um, from the beginning to end, you'll find like, it starts with um, just feeling this idea of, of somebody and really digging somebody. And you're kind of, you know, hesitant about approaching them. And then it goes to, okay, I, 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 it's unlimited 
love here in the next track and you like we're officially together you know um and then the next track is is more so like okay let me really get to know you the track is called get to know but it, it's literally that uh, uh getting to know that person intellectually and getting to their deeper levels of of their existence um and then the next track is like okay we're hitting a rough patch like we're, we're clashing a little bit there's some you know a little, a little bit negative energy there um and then the last track is about forgiveness and um understanding and, and really putting like the other person before you so that there there can be love at the end of the day there for that other person um and then the last track is a unplugged version of get to know so it's it's real nice it's real nice so i'm, I'm really proud of it okay so you and take us through all the ups and downs the emotions of a of a relationship yes in one tr in one album <laughs> <all that. laughs> okay yeah. i understand mm -hmm. um now the title of the album I understand that FATE is an acronym for? It is an acronym for follow after the experience, which means, um, you know, don't, don't carry your, your past into something, into a new opportunity, because you're actually going to end up um, manipulating your fate in a negative way. So, it's more, it's, it's kind of a mantra of like, don't let fear stop you from, from experiencing this new thing because you don't know what you'll learn out of it. You don't know what you'll get from it um, moving forward. And, and it, it's, all a, it's all a benefit either way. It's a win-win situation. So that the, the FATE acronym stands for follow after the experience. So just go through the experience, just go through it so you can learn from it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I had to get that in there. I just want to make sure that people understood where you were taking us with this uh, EP. Very good. Um, now, um, we were talking um, before we started recording. Um, you just moved back from Boston to the Bay Area. Yes, um, absolutely. With the whole COVID-19 thing, um, what's on tap for you? Um, you know, I guess... 2020 is out of the question, perhaps. Are you going to release any more music between now and the end of the year? We'll see. We will see. Um, I'm I'm trying to work some things out. Um, but, you know, if you follow me on my socials, I'll continue uh, posting my content there, which is like these arrangements of these R&B songs or gospel songs or any pop songs that I kind of just make my own. So, um, it's, been, it's been really fun for me to, to express myself, you know, on social media and actually connect, connecting with a lot of different people I would have never thought I would connect with through that, through that platform. So regardless, you'll see stuff from me on social media, for sure. Okay. But new music, we're going to see. It might okay. be, it's definitely going to be next year, but I don't know about before December. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... You mentioned social media. Are you doing like the uh, Instagram and the Facebook Live and all that yeah. kind of stuff? Yes, yes, yes. I um I've done some performances already uh, virtually um, beginning of COVID, um, a Miss Washington Live series. So I'm planning to actually bring that back, um, where I did these like virtual live concerts. Um, and yeah, I I I'm gonna keep keep going with that and and getting used to this virtual platform is a little bit different, but I think I'm getting, getting the hang of it now. And um, it's actually worked out for me uh, much more than I thought. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, just curious, are you um, an independent artist? Are you signed to a label or? Well, yes, I'm definitely independent artist, def definitely independent artist. And um, yeah, it's been a weird time for a lot of us because, you know, COVID, it, it, me, I do music full time. So it's affected different things in, in terms of terms of finances and things like that. But like I said, it, it's all working together really well. And, um, you know, if, if people out for anybody out there, if you want to go support independent artists now, now is a good time to do it because um, COVID has definitely taken a toll on um, a lot of a lot of musicians and, and artists in general. So, 
Yeah, here, here. I understand that. Um, hopefully 2021, you'll be able to get out and perhaps, you know, do some performances uh, live and yes. expose people to, uh, to your music. Um, but yeah, I think COVID has everybody kind of, you know, on wait and see mode right now. Yeah, we're like, we don't know what's about to, <laughs> what's about to happen. So we'll All see. Right. Just curious, do you, um, now I know you just, you said you just graduated from Berkeley. Do you mm-hmm. collaborate or have you collaborated with like, uh, you know, your classmates on different projects or? Um, Not officially. Um, it, it's it, A lot of the collaboration I did with my peers was performances, um, like in real, you know, real life uh, format. So, you know, a lot of that was there, but um, actually, and actually one of the producers who, worked on um, track number two, No Cap. Uh, he's he's a classmate of mine. So um, that was that was really cool to have him. That was our, actually our first time collaborating in general on this. So that was really cool. But um, yeah, I, I plan to do a lot more collaborations. Really. Like, okay. I'm really ready for that. Yeah. All right. Let me just uh, step back to your, uh, your gospel upbringing. Do you foresee a time where you might do a gospel album or a gospel EP? Mm, that's a good question. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say fully now, but I think like my style and, and my sound uh, is a little bit gospel hints of it anyway in there. So like you might, you might hear some hints of that in, in even what I consider R&B. Um, because R and B is actually a really broad term anyway, because there's so many different yeah. categories and subgenres anyway. Right. So I don't know. For me, I just feel like my my sound has a, actually a whole bunch of stuff into it at once. But I don't know. I, if I were to do a gospel album, I haven't really thought about that yet. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, at the time of this recording. Um, your EP has been out for a few weeks now. How has it uh, been received by the public or your fans? Oh man, it's been great. Um, you know, a lot of people have felt like, oh, like I haven't heard of this perspective before and in R and B. So that was really hum- like humbling to hear um, because, you know. There, there's there's so many artists out there. There's so many, so many. And to hear that kind of com- comment come from from listeners and from fans is is amazing, you know? Um, so it's been well received for sure, for sure. Okay. Why don't you um, plug your social media and where people can uh, find your music or get in touch with you? Yeah, so follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So my Instagram username is Miss Washington underscore underscore. That's M I S S Washington underscore underscore. And then fa- follow me on Facebook at Miss Washington, uh, at my, yeah slash Miss Washington Music. Um, or you can just look up my name, Miss Washington, M I S S Washington there. Um, and you can also go to my website to purchase the album. It is um www.misswashingtonmusic.com and you can go to the shop page and you'll find find the album there as well as some merch too if you want to support there it's definitely available so yeah okay and we'll have links to uh miss washington's uh, excuse me social media sites as well as our webpage on our website and also in the show notes if you're um watching this on youtube uh, one more quick question here for you, Miss Washington. Why do you go by Miss Washington? Um, how come? How did you yeah. choose that? Just curious. Yeah, I mean, I feel like my first name. I, I did a. I, I went through several different names, but I felt like this was the name that felt like earned respect. Felt like commanded respect, and it I felt like. You know, a lot of people emphasize their first name, but not many people emphasize their last name. And for me, like the actual, not to get too deep, but the actual, you know, last name Washington, like is, is a very African-American name and, you know, but it's not at the same time, if you go back through history, um, it's, it's, it's a name that slave 
uh, owners gave to their slaves. So it, for me, it feels like, okay, I'm, I'm really connected to my roots with this last name. It really makes a, a, a huge statement um, alone. So I, I feel really connected to my roots through, through my last name. Okay. Uh, fair yeah. enough. And thank you for explaining that. I, um, I saw the name of that. Okay. Miss Washington, but what's her name? She goes by. Oh, Miss Washington. Got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything else you want to add Miss Washington before we, uh, before we uh, cut loose this interview. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, the 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 album is has a piece of it for every type of listener. So even if you don't um, necessarily are into fully like slow R and B, there's some, there's something to stand up and dance to, or there's something to you know drive in your car and listen to for that. So there's there's a piece of it for everybody. So go check it out, y'all. It's gonna be really really fun to hear. Yeah, I can attest that it's a it's a great album um, or great EP, I should say. Um, and I think people will enjoy it uh, if you like that soul vibe. It's definitely very smooth and I, I love it. Um, Miss Washington, uh, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. For having me. Appreciate you. All right. That's Miss Washington. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Washington. You can find out more about Miss Washington on her website at misswashingtonmusic.com. Don't forget to read the profile we have on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.